Hi everybody, Happy New Year. Uh, New Year's Day, this is my first video I've posted in several years. Um, and uh, although maybe a couple of years ago I was back in school uh, working on a master's and I think I posted a math lecture by accident to this, uh, so I don't know if anybody had seen that or not before I took it back down, but uh, I'm here to talk about my 1966 Blackface Fender Vibrolux Reverb. It's mostly original. Uh, I finally restored it after leaving it on and off for uh, uh, many years. Um, I just want to say before I go any further that uh, just a shout out to all the trolls, you know, go somewhere else. I don't want to hear all your nasty crap. It's partly why I haven't posted a video for so long. People um, like to be trolls. So if you got something nice to say or something constructive, you know, constructive criticism, or, you know, I'm not an expert in this. I have some knowledge in about 10 years of amp building experience, but other people with blackface amps out there I'd love to hear from you. Um, but I, I bought this amp in 1993 from a shop it was being sold on consignment. This thing is not a perfect all original pristine numbers matching. Uh, somebody had modified the cabinet and the tube chart got destroyed before I ever owned it. But I restored, knocked some shims out and restored the cabinet. Um, even when I got it in 93, it wasn't flawless. So I know there's people out there that if you uh, aren't a five-star general of tube amp expertise and you dare melt a single solder on an original blackface, you, you are uh, scarred for life or something. So, But anyways, I had this amp, bought it in 93. It played beautifully for, I don't know, 18, 20 years and probably 18, 19 years. Amazing sounding amp, as the blackface amps always are when they're set up right. Um, but it just faded. It just totally faded out. The sound went to crap, and the, the bass would disappear. The power output would drop, pops, buzzes, fizzles, and it just, uh, it just basically faded. And um, I tried to troubleshoot many times, um, and I would find two or three significant problems um serious problems fix those but it didn't totally fix the amp and i would work on it for uh, a couple days diagnosing finding problems fixing them and it wouldn't completely fix the amp back to the way it used to sound and i would get start getting pretty angry with this frustrated with this amp so i would just put it away and let six months or a year go by come back after this two or three times of doing this I came to the conclusion that with these, you know, 50, 55 year old amps, when they get that old, they just start to fade out. And every single resistor, um, capacitor, tube socket, every even every solder is suspect when it's that old. So after not really being able to troubleshoot everything, I decided to just do a full on restore. And, um, so some of the things, um, these molded blue capacitors, I've heard from a number of people and seen some videos too where these are supposedly part of the special sauce so which makes these amps sound so good. So I did not touch them. Same with these mica capacitors. I left all those alone. Did not touch those. Um, but I replaced uh, most of the resistors on the uh, input the preamp board um, and I also um, the old Mallory's um, I just replaced all those now I tried different makes Weber um, Tad um, Chinese Sprague Adams in the power side the filter caps on the power side I guess they're okay I'm not gonna talk down about any of their stuff but these F and T capacitors made in Germany, I've built another, another, a number of amp projects for myself and for you know professional musician. And I don't know, I just like these F and T capacitors. I like the way they sound, so I use those throughout. There is one Sprague here. 
Uh, most of the sprigs are made in China now, and I don't really know if they're as good as they used to be, but I just use the F&Ts now. I built a high watt, 50 watt clone with F&Ts, and the thing just sounds amazing. So, so I went and replaced just about every resistor and capacitor on the preamp, and um, as I started going through this amp and doing diagnosing and replacing, eventually last month started replacing a lot of things. You know, I found a lot of rotten solders. Um, these amps too, with this paper turret board or tag board, it's mounted in three places. It's mounted here, here, and here. And I think when this thing gets hot, the board starts to bow in the middle. And I found that some of these solders in the, where it bows the most were disintegrated. So that's one thing I found. I also noticed too that in the preamp side, um, they used a lot of these uh, sprags, these uh, sprag, um, I'm sorry, not sprag, carbon comp resistors. And they seem to measure okay, these old 55 year old carbon comp resistors. But when I would suck the weld out of the joint and go to remove them, they would completely disintegrate um, with any slightest amount of, you know, gentle force at all. So, um, so, um, so I did clean up a lot of solders. Um, you know, I found some faulty or some old solders that were just disintegrating on the tube sockets. I ended up replacing um, every single tube socket except the um, rectifier, all new tube sockets. And I found that on the preamp side, you know, I got six preamp tubes on this black face and um, a lot of the problems were faulty um, pin, faulty connections on the preamp tube sockets. Um, at some point too, I actually um, bought a new output transformer because I, there was a nice deal on an output transformer and um, by a company called Classic Tone, made in USA, Classic Tone Output Transformer. They sell them at tubedepot.com. Really nice product. This amp has the power transformer, output transformer, and the choke are all date code 1965 and this thing has a 66 chassis code I believe that's the that code is for 1966 for when it was built correct me if I'm wrong um, I also had a, a short issue with the um, bias pot the original one and then I replaced it with a nice CTS pot and then it had a short in it too so but we're good now and uh, because it's easier too, I grounded the, the pot actually to the chassis instead of to the body. Another thing that I'm curious about, and other people can, if you had worked on these before, um, these uh, sprags, the, um, see this, these, um, the sprague, these were originally, the, or they were Mallory's, the original Mallory capacitors that I replaced. The leads, the negatives were ground grounded by a solder to the chassis. And the, the solder that was used for, for doing this, it's different than the other solders. It's a higher temperature solder. And I use a, a 40 watt soldering iron for all my amp work. And it wouldn't even touch it, wouldn't melt it at all this solder that they use to ground the the Mallory capacitors to the chassis and then I have a backup 60 watt iron and it was probably almost too hot so I don't know if anybody else has some experience with the uh, that higher temperature solder grounding to the chassis I'd love to hear about it I don't know why they they must have done that because it was quick and easy when I build new amps I tend to do a uh, a grounding bus and ground everything to the chassis but anyways um, I'm nobody to uh, pick apart a Fender Blackface amp that's for sure so I'll shut up and move on but uh, yeah I've got the classic tone output transformer in here I got the old one set aside it's still good though 
still works, but the uh, but the um, it still works, but um, the Opa transformers on the Vibrolux amps um, tended to break up a little earlier, cause for earlier breakup in the operation of the amp, and the new one I put in. It actually breaks up later. There's more clean headroom, which I love, so I'm just leaving the new one in for now. Um, anyways, um, so I went through and replaced most of the resistors um, just about everywhere with uh, new uh, carbon comp and mostly one watt and some half watt resistors on the preamp. Um, and these um, F and T capacitors, I replaced the Mallory's with these. They are larger, but they fit. They work fine. They're much larger. They sound great though, so. Um, yeah, what else did I do? Um, anyways, the, the amp sounds amazing. So, uh, um, this is video is just me talking about the stuff I went through trying to restore this. And it sounds amazing. Previously, this amp would start to break up around four ish. Now it's clean up to five, and it has a sweet break up at six. And then you can dime this thing, and it'll give you Marshall tones. It's a pretty amazing amp. So yeah, I did. I changed all the resistors on the preamp side as well at the dials home pots and so on inputs so sorry it's a bit wobbly um, I need to improve my tech for making movies but anyways I haven't uh, made a movie in a while the amp sounds amazing I'll put up another clip where I actually give some sound demos with different guitars but the thing's fully restored it took some time and it was easier just to do a large replacement of resistors and some capacitors and all the two pots so uh, it was a success all right take it easy